This here is not just one of the most promising new electric cars around, but one of the most desirable new cars of 2021, full stop. And look, it's a Hyundai. How did that happen? What is it? Well, it's a Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai. I don't know, you make your mind up wherever you are in the world. The important thing is it's the Ionic 5 from that brand. And that means it's the start of a numerical family of electric cars. And this one is the big family crossover. I know it looks like a little 80s hot hatch, but this thing would squish a Fiesta. It's on a new platform bespoke for electric cars, and that's already being morphed into the Kia EV6 and Genesis GV60. If you're Tesla or one of the Volkswagen IDs or Mercedes EQs, then look out, the Koreans are coming. What does it look like? Possibly the bravest car design of 2021? I love it. I love that it's retro without being lazy. I love that instead of making that tired old excuse about playing electric car design safe, so it doesn't scare off your parents, they just had some fun with everything. Pick your favourite detail. These mottled wheels, the slashes cut into the wheel arch, this crease down the side, the angry robot tail lights. It looks like a car that's been designed to look cool, not just to tick someone's box in a wind tunnel. Is it practical? It should be, because this new platform that Hyundai and Kia have cooked up together to base their new EVs on allows for a three metre long wheelbase. In the old days, you had to buy a BMW 5 Series to get this sort of legroom. And yet with a flat floor, the Ionic 5 is even roomier. And then if I jump in the front, then by sliding this armrest cup holder charging tower out of the way, I can choose between giving passengers more or less legroom or being able to slide out of that door if I've parked up against a high wall. Now that is clever. And when you recline these electric seats with their integrated footrests, it can even be a not particularly comfortable bed for the evening. Good night. Will I get along with the tech? At first, it's a bit jarring for a Hyundai. The gear selector's buried behind the steering wheel and that takes some getting used to. And the heater is controlled by a touch sensitive glossy window and that can be a bit tricky to see and press in bright sunlight. But this pair of 12 inch screens, well, they're crisp, they're comprehensive, very Mercedes looking, aren't they? But this one really puts the wide into widescreen and you might be asking your passengers to change radio station for you because it's a bit of a stretch. What's the gimmick? Well, this curious pad to the side of the dashboard, that's not an extra speaker. It's actually a magnetic notice board that you're supposed to be able to stick your to-do list to with your favorite holiday fridge magnet. So we'll just pop that on there. Yeah, it seems you need quite a strong magnet, so it's probably a more sensible place just to put the phone instead. Then in the touchscreen, perhaps a sillier idea really, pop into media and we find our relaxing sounds of nature. Because yes, the Ionic 5 can pretend it's a snowy village or that you're sitting in a noisy coffee shop or even that it's a rainy day. I mean, why would you have that? We're in England. It's always raining. How big's the battery? The entry level Ionic 5 has a 58 kilowatt hour battery. It's only available with rear wheel drive and on the WLTP official cycle claims 238 miles of range. The Ionic long range ups that to 73 kilowatt hours and with one rear motor, it's good for up to 280 miles. This here is your top of the line dual motor version. Having dual motors does drop your claimed range back down to 267 miles, but in return, it should be rapid in a straight line. How fast is it? Well, to find out, I'm simply going to pin the Ionic 5 in a straight line for as long as possible down our straight test track and then use this clever GPS box of maths to get some super accurate numbers. And we are expecting this to be quite quick because this is the top of the range twin motor ultimate Ionic 5, 305 horsepower. That still sounds like a lot to me. And 446 pounds feet of torque, which sounds like an absolute chunk. Pretty easy job for me as well. All I have to do is foot on brake into drive. I'm gonna have the sport mode on because now I've got red dials and I feel ever so sporty. And here we go, three, two, one. 
launch. Whoa. Yep, it's done the old kind of ticklish chummy thing, which means it is officially a fast car. That's 70 miles an hour, that's 80. That's 90. Oh, it's not even tailing off, that's 100. 105. Yeah, I thought it'd get up to 70 and then it would kind of have had enough. But no, here we are at 115. That's the claimed VMAX. Go on, we'll keep our foot in. 118 indicated. Lack of runway left ahead indicated. So we'll break. Brakes are good on this. There isn't that horrible kind of fizzy pedal that you get when the regen is playing up and come to a stop. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 managed 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds and reached 100 miles per hour in 11.2 seconds. Yeah, that's really quick hot hatch pace. I think you'd need an RS3 to be getting past that, certainly not a Hyundai i30N, that feels very rapid. It took 13.38 seconds to cover the quarter mile at 108.9 miles per hour. I can't get over how quick these dual motor standard EVs are. I mean, are they gonna have to change the driving test? Where's the charging port? Well, this will start off fairly simple because look, unlike the Volkswagen ID4 and co, we've got space under the bonnet for our charging cable. And once you are plugged in, to the home wall box anyway, then you can get a full charge in around 12 hours, but it's worth seeking out a rapid charger because the Ionic 5 could accept charge at up to 350 kilowatts. And that means when you are plugged in, you can go from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. But the Ionic 5's real trick is not how fast you can charge it, it's what it can charge for you. Because it has an 800 volt electrical architecture underneath, you can discharge the battery to run stuff like a fridge or a toaster, anything with a socket really. If you're feeling really generous, you can even rescue a dead electric car. Is it comfy? Come to our Belgian Parve worst case scenario test course and the Ionic's doing fine. I mean, there's nothing complicated about this. We've got no adaptive magnetic air ride suspension that can predict bumps ahead. Just got normal tires, normal suspension, and a chassis that's set up for comfort. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be fooled by all the rattling you can hear. That's just all of our expensive camera gear braking. What's it like on a motorway? Well, motorway specifically, it's actually pretty good. Nice and stable, impressively quiet. I mean, we've got laminated glazing, so it is a refined car, but now I'm actually out and doing some driving, I can show you just a couple of problems with this interior. See, where I've got the steering wheel that's comfortable for me, it's chopping off a bit of the data in front of me, so I've ended up having to have it a little bit higher. And then look at the touchscreen. I can't actually reach the touchscreen unless I lean out of the seat. Hmm. Still, despite the Ionic 5 not looking like the slipperiest shape in the world, there's not too much wind noise. Now this really isn't a sort of autobahn smashing kind of car, but ah, go on then. High speed bowl, top lane, find out how refined the Ionic 5 is when it's going really quickly. on for the maximum speed of the car now that's an indicated 117 it's actually more grown up than a tesla but yeah the range meter is dropping faster than the trip meter is increasing so i think we'll call that a day what's it like in a corner well it's quite dull Yep, not everything the Ionic 5 does embarrasses the European old guard with its kind of space age-ishness. This is not a driver's car, and to prove that, I shall now go around corners much too quickly. Whoa, it feels heavy now. Yep, it's certainly fast, the Ionic 5 with a dual motor. This is a fast car and stops pretty well too, but it's quick in quite an Audi-ish way. There's grip and stability and then understeer and absolutely no feedback wherever you go looking for it. I am quite interested to see, given the brilliant work they're doing at the moment with Hyundai's hot hatches, 
if the end division can get hold of an Ionic 5 and really turn it into a sports car. What's the real world range? Well, for this top spec Ionic 5 with the twin motors, front and rear, and the bigger battery, the claim is 267 miles, pretty healthy. Real world, on a mild day at least, that's going to be more around the kind of 220 mark. I mean, I know it's amusing to catch Honda Civic Type R's napping, but this car's about as sporty as one of Hyundai's oil tankers. So we'd stick with the 217 horsepower single motor and get about 250 miles of range. What's the verdict? Well, I'm not sure we can give the complete verdict right now. We need to wait about three, four, five years, see which sold better in the end. The super played safe, don't upset anyone, Volkswagen ID4 and all of the same again cars that are based on it, or the much wackier feature packed Ionic 5. So if you're there in the comments in 2025, hello the future, could you please drop a note below and let us know who won? But in the here and now, you've got to give it to Hyundai for starting its new Ionic family of EVs with such an edgy bit of kit. They've seen the world beyond just using sportiness to sell cars. They realise we don't all sweep down deserted mountain passes every day. We sit in traffic, we park, we commute, we run errands. And wouldn't it be nice to have a comfortable and spacious machine that did all that, but still had enough design touches to make you give it one last look when you walked away? Because the secret of the Ionic 5 is that it's not a futuristic vehicle for a utopian vision of tomorrow that we might one day achieve together. It's just a chill out pod. It's a relaxing car for the complicated, annoying and stressful world that we all have to live in right now. Thank you.